Crash and burn. Hey everyone, so tonight I am going to be discussing Peter Greenaway's first feature film. And it's not really a movie. Some people have referred to it as being a mock documentary, but it's not exactly a documentary either. And that is 1980's The Falls. Now, what this movie is, is it's sort of like a, it's like a fictitious video made for government employees to better understand 92 people slash elements slash happenings that um, have transpired as the result of something that is known as the VUE, and that stands for the Violent Unknown Event. And that is the, the catalyst for everything that takes place throughout the course of this, like I said, what some people would refer to as a mock documentary. Um, at some point in the past, it sounds like the more recent past, um, millions and millions of people around the world have become obsessed with birds or have sort of become more bird-like as far as like their, their anatomy is concerned, like the, the physicality of their existence. Some of them have started to develop bird-ish features, features, sorry. And other people who have remained human, they still sometimes think they can fly and toss themselves off buildings. And of course they can't fly, so they just fall and hit the ground and die. Um, and this has changed the world um, so completely that there's no turning back. It sounds like, in a sense, the VUE was uh, sort of like a, a mass infection that took place. Um, you know, like the plague or Ebola, the hantavirus, something very serious, but the science behind it it, it, it of course, it's nothing like a virus. It's just, it's more like, it's never explained throughout the course of the three hours that, uh, that this caused it or, or it has this particular effect on people who are affected by it. It's never made clear. This video, like I said, it's more like a, a government Rolodex, so to speak. It starts at A, ends with Z or Z or however the fuck you want to choose to pronounce that letter. And that's all we get. And it talks predominantly about people, but sometimes events and elements and things that have taken place as the result of the VUE. And this is a wild one. This is a, this is a hell of a way to kick off a film career. <laughs> you could make the argument that this is the movie that a person makes um, and then they're, they're grounded forever as a result of this. That, like this, would, this is going to throw most people so far off course that they would never look at another film by Peter Greenaway again because this is a seriously in-depth and daunting work that's like I said it's three hours long and it's just ticking off name after name about these people who are affected by the VUE and there's no there's no real narrative there's no there's definitely nothing by the way in any sense of the word exposition does not come up here at all there's, uh, there's no characters brought in to help um, sort of help us as the audience in any way understand what's going on. And that's why I don't feel that this is a documentary. I don't feel this is a feature film. I feel that this is better looked at along the lines of it being like um, um, an auditory filing cabinet, I guess. Like, it's as if somebody had opened a filing cabinet somewhere in some government office that was handling the fallout as a result of the VUE and somebody just chose to show pictures of the people as they discussed their files or perhaps read them verbatim. It does sound like the, the narration is being, it's, it's, it's very precise and it does sound as if it's been, or it's being reading, it's being read off a page for what it's worth. But this is a great movie. Michael Nyman did the score. Michael Nyman has been a long, frequent collaborator. Well, I shouldn't say frequent. Infrequently frequent collaborator of Peter Greenaway's. Um, this is a wild one. 
I've never really been able to sort of wrap my head around what the VUE is, and Peter Greenaway is known for sort of creating puzzles for the people that are watching his movies. And if you can put the pieces together throughout watching any one of his films, um, you'll understand the bigger picture. But I've tried doing that with this, and I've seen this movie dozens of times over the years, and I just, I can't make heads or tails out of it as far as trying to find out what happened and if the answer is hidden somewhere in the movie. I can't find it. This, this movie is one giant conundrum, is a, is a good way of putting it. Um, Nick Bantock had to be influenced by Peter Greenaway. I know Nick Bantock is strictly an author and slash painter, but sometimes I can, a lot, I can see a lot of similarities and there's a lot of parallels running between the films of Peter Greenaway and the books of Nick Bantock. Nick Bantock, of course, he's famously known for the Griffin and Sabine trilogy. He also did the Egyptian jukebox. I don't suppose it matters. Nobody really reads anymore. But yeah, I don't know. This is a wild one. This is a hell of a way to start a career, I'll say that. So thank you so much for hanging out with me for a little over six minutes while I rambled somewhat pointlessly about Peter Greenaway's first feature film, and that is 1980's The Falls. If you liked this review or this ramble or whatever, don't forget to do something nice for somebody. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for hanging out until the end. Have a good night. I just wanted to say thank you for making it through the entire video. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to remind everyone one more time, even though I've probably already done this in the video that you just watched, to please click the like button as well as the subscribe button because it helps this channel grow. And thank you for hitting like and subscribe. And we will see you guys really soon.